don't know, Michael. I think today's going to be an exciting day. Not even out of town, and the gates are already coming down. It's a hot Sunday afternoon on July 24th, 2016. And on this last minute whim, Liz, Michael, and I headed out into this South Florida swelter in search of some trains. We were going more than old-fashioned on this expedition. Of note, the only thing new in this venture was Liz and I's new 2015 Ford Escape filling the role of pace vehicle today. We were headed out with only our timetable, cameras, and cell phone. No radio or other modern forms of train chasing tech would be used on this venture, and it was quickly sizing up to be a good day for us. Our first catch was the weekend usual L740-24, the Tropicana Juice Train, headed north towards Tampa and Yolman Yard for a fresh crew change. We would leapfrog him into Tampa and would catch up with him again later in this video. With L740 in our rear view, Liz let the horses run as we raced along old US 41, passing grain hoppers at Port Manatee and a pair of idling SD 70Ms at the Rockport docks. General Motors EMD products have always been common power on the Bone Valley since replacing the Seaboard's aging Alco RS3s in that role in the 1960s, and one can safely bet to find a variety of new and classic EMD power on these trains. Coming over the Orient Road overpass, we knew L740 was making its way north, but with only that ethanol K train on the outbound holding track and the remote switcher working the yard, the view wasn't promising. So the gang and I made tracks, no pun intended, and headed out eastward towards Plant City, paralleling the S-Line all the way. Getting into Old Plant City, we met a southbound CSX track truck and with much curiosity followed him to the Old Plant City Cemetery just north of town, where he left the right of way, so we set up there for our next catch. And in a scene straight out of the days of the old seaboard, breaking the late morning calm in a much ghostly fashion, again came L740, this time with a fresh crew, knocking down that northbound high green. I just love places like Old Plant City Cemetery. They're a highlight to me on these outings, and I plan on shooting more trains here in the future. Perhaps it's the eerie beauty, or the great filming location, or maybe Liz is right. Maybe it's just the historic importance of these places. I love learning new stuff about the history of our local communities. With L740 out of the picture for the last time, the gang and I decided to make a short trip over to Lakeland. With CSX's recent closure of Winston Yard and the abolishment of Q603 and 604, rail traffic through Lakeland was significantly reduced.
Our goal today was to photograph one final train, anything coming under those last five remaining ACL signal bridges. With PTC and new signal tech on the horizon, these monuments of time were burning bright during their final days governing trains over this stretch of railroad. These relics over the years have guided crack passenger trains, fast freights, even wartime traffic. I would even be willing to bet my hard-earned dollar that perhaps even old coastline steam once abided by these signals in regular service. We set up just down from Winston Yard by the Silver Moon Drive-In Theater, and our wait was quickly rewarded. In the distance on track one, that old USNS searchlight signal target was displaying a high green, clear signal, operated maximum authorized speed, and since it was for Amtrak 91, the maximum authorized speed was an astonishing 80 miles per hour. Miss Patty was doing every bit of that today as she raced towards Tampa with a single locomotive, a baggage car, two sleepers, a cafe car, and four coaches. Making our way back over to Plant City and setting up just down from the diamond, things got a little strange. Here, coming up out of Yeoman Yard, running light, was a lone AC44CW, number 210. Having no radio, we decided to give chase to this odd power move. clouds looming on the horizon, we gave chase, and what was weird for us was that this guy was strangely catchable. Ask any veteran rail fan about trying to catch locomotives running light and running on all clear signals. They'd probably tell you, good luck. In this case, the crew, however, was easing along the right of way at a solid 45 miles per hour. Just as we had done L740, we quickly leapfrogged ahead. It wasn't long before the purpose of this power move became clear. As mentioned earlier, when Winston closed, CSX ceased running its regularly scheduled mixed manifest trains, the monster long Q603 and 604. Now all local traffic into the Lakeland area and into Winston is handled by different trains involving a new system of setting out cars on the S line at nights just north of Plant City and running it as an extra scheduled local train onto the A line at Sandler Junction. We would chase and capture much of this operation in this video.
Today offered the crew a different set of challenges, as they must run long hood forward, a practice CSX does not often allow with their wide cab heavy six axle locomotives. And having no ditch lights on the rear platform, FRA rule restricts the crew to a 25 mile per hour crawl back towards town, where the crew will ease the train through Sandler Junction and onto the A-Line. Our final catch of the day, running northbound up the S-Line, 70 plus cars of aggregate rock, led by SD70M4698 and SD40-2809. Tired of the heat and literally eating this crew's dust, the gang and I headed for La Casa. We hope you enjoyed this video brought to you by Country Rail Fan Productions. If you liked this video, please hit the like button and be sure to subscribe to our channel or like us on Facebook at Country Rail Fan Productions at Facebook.com for more great railroad media such as this. And as always, happy train watching.